Hello and thanks for joining us for Reporters France Vanquet show, highlighting reporting from around the world. This week we're turning to India and the subject is cows. Of course, cows are sacred in India, worshipped by millions of Hindus and granted a special protected status. But that doesn't mean they're entirely safe. Every year, one and a half million are smuggled across the border into Bangladesh, where they're slaughtered for domestic consumption. Half of all beef in Bangladesh originates in India as Bangladesh's own production struggles to cover the nation's needs. India has tried to curb the traffic, but thanks to corruption and a porous border, especially in West Bengal, it's no easy task. France Franquette, Eloise Tefoloni, Marc Vatrolo, Constantin Simon and Vikramaditya Singh report on the trade that breaks some long-held taboos. We're on the banks of the Ganges River in the Indian state of West Bengal, close to the Bangladeshi border. This is the heart of a militarized zone, patrolled day and night by armed border guards. Turn off your lights. We're almost there. We'll have problems if they see us. Shantu is a smuggler. Every night, Shantu and his accomplices wait for the right moment to take their cattle across the river. They've got a hundred animals with them tonight. The customs official has just passed by. We have to hide our cows. We'll have to wait a little bit. The game of hide and seek has begun. Shantu risks his life every night to make a few extra dollars. The border guards have orders to shoot on sight. Just last week, two cow traffickers were shot dead by the soldiers. We don't earn enough money and life is difficult here. We have no choice but to face death if we want to feed our families. Tonight, more than 20 men will swim across the Ganges to sell their cattle illegally in neighboring Bangladesh. This is the spot where deals are struck between the traffickers and the farmers. Give me 10 euros more. No, 250 euros for this cow is my last price. These cows have come from all over India, some of them from several thousand kilometers away. In Bangladesh, the month of Ramadan is a period of good business for us. The demand for meat is really high, even more than usual, because of the festival. Yes, during these months we make nearly double the money. Bengal is a buffer zone between two countries, India and Bangladesh, and two faiths, Hinduism and Islam. One worships cows, the other eats them. Every year, close to two million cows are illegally exported from India to Bangladesh. This illegal trafficking is big business, worth more than 350 million euros. On the Indian side, 5,000 cows legally cross the border every morning. They will return the same evening. We're waiting for the border post to be able to take our cows to the other side of the Ganges. In India, fertile fields have been submerged under a river for the last few years. That's why farmers such as Mandal need to find other ways to make ends meet. My father left these cows behind for me, but today almost nothing grows in my fields. I needed money and that's why I decided to let them go. In Bangladesh, Mandal can sell his cows for 300 euros, almost twice the price that he would get in an Indian market. If the Indian custom officials find out that we're selling our cows, they beat us without pity when we cross the borders. Sometimes they beat the traffickers so badly that they die from their injuries. This morning, after passing the border post, Mandal hands over his 50 cows to some children who will help them cross to the other side. children are used by traffickers to bring the cows to the right port. Once they cross over to the other side of the river, they will be sold again. It's difficult, but I'm not really complaining. The bosses are really nice to me. Before each journey, they give us a proper meal with a cold drink. After more than an hour in the waters, the animals finally arrive on the Bangladeshi shore. These cows will soon be sold at a market a few minutes away from the river, under the watchful eye of the border guards. They control the area and supervise the trafficking. 
this man has just bought a dozen cows, they'll be taken directly to a slaughterhouse in the region. <laughs> these documents certify that the cows belong to me and that everything is legal. With these, no one can say a thing to me. They've been stamped by customs. I had to pay only 50 euros for that. Five years ago, the Bangladeshi government granted an official status to hundreds of markets like this one. A Bangladeshi customs official confirms this. He doesn't know he's being filmed. This trafficking has always existed, but before it was only the traffickers that made a profit. To cash in, the government started issuing these certificates. It's bringing in millions of euros. The trade in cattle is growing year after year because it addresses important economic needs in the region. Indian cows are not only supplied to slaughterhouses, their skins are also used by the leather industry in Bangladesh's capital, Dhaka. Leather is one of the most important exports for the country. It's worth over 150 million euros to its economy. This is one of the largest tanneries in Bangladesh. I prefer to hide of Indian cows. They're of the best quality and I can sell them for a higher price in the market. Close to half of the Indian cows that arrive in Bangladesh are used for manufacturing leather. Everyone wants to buy these skins. I export them all over the world. Germany, France, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and the demand keeps on growing. On the Indian side, cow trafficking is provoking religious tensions. Hindu extremists have posted videos on the internet that show them punishing cow traffickers. This sort of punishment is organized regularly by members of groups such as the BJP, a Hindu nationalist political party. This temple on the bank of the Ganges is a regular meeting point for anti-cow trafficking activists. For most Hindus, the cow is revered like a goddess. The cow is like a mother for us. From our birth to our death, we drink her milk. Milk gives us life. This group has come together to fight cow trafficking. It's our duty to fight cow trafficking. I order every citizen of our country to do it. All the Hindus must take up arms and patrol the border with the border guards all day and all night long. It's the only way we'll win this battle. To appease Hindu groups and to avoid political embarrassment, the Indian government has over the last three years strengthened its policing of villages on the border, like here in the village of Char Rajapur. Every month, farmers gather in the village square to have their pictures taken with their cows. Move a little bit to the right. All the cows in Bengal are now regularly counted and branded with the names of their owners. What's your name? Santash. How many cows do you have? Two. Alongside the photo, each cow is now also given a certificate which states the size, weight and colour of the animal, in addition to the name of its owner. Earlier the traffickers would come and steal our cattle during the night. Now we have these cards and the controls have been strengthened at the border, it's harder for them to steal our animals. What the government did not anticipate is the border guards using the system for their own profit. The guards open the border whenever they want, and sometimes the farmers don't have the time to take their cows to graze in Bangladesh. Even if all our papers are in order, they demand a bribe to let our cows pass. Our presence has attracted the villagers. In front of the camera, people start to speak, and we discover a totally different reality of corrupt border guards that play an active role in the trafficking. They close their eyes to what's happening. They let the smugglers pass through and take their share of the money. They protect the smugglers, and there's nothing we can do about it. These villagers say the border has become a zone of lawlessness, seemingly abandoned by the authorities and police forces. Gopin Sharma runs an NGO that's been trying to convince the farmers to report the situation. There's no law here. Villagers are being killed and tortured almost every day. I'll show you what border guards are doing to the poor people. A year ago, the son of this farmer was killed while he was working in the fields. He had tried to prevent the traffickers from crossing. He didn't know they were being helped by the border guards. My son was just 15 years old. 
they beat him to death. And if that wasn't enough, they shot him twice as well. This man has collected all the evidence necessary to bring his son's murderers to justice, but little has been done. If you want justice, you've got to give me a copy of your file. I'll take the case to the Supreme Court if necessary. Gopin's fight has just begun in a region where a climate of impunity reigns. Nobody's doing anything to stop what's going on. The politicians have closed their eyes and the soldiers are killing people mercilessly. The judges don't act on court cases. The entire system is corrupt. Over the last two years, Gopin Sharma has identified 67 murders and 115 cases of torture against the border guards. In that time, India and Bangladesh have tried to reach an agreement on legalizing the trade, but without much success. Until that happens, the impoverished farmers of West Bengal will continue to pay the highest price for this illegal trade. That's it for this edition of Reporters. You can watch this story and all our other reports again on our website. That's France24.com. Until the next time, bye for now.